are you all doing today? I've been sitting here and it's been so hot the last few days. I'm talking about 30 degrees Celsius. And suddenly today, which is Saturday, it's turned icy cold and raining. <laughs> and I thought, gosh, we, we're really having quite a change in temperature. But anyway, I thought it's an ideal opportunity to get creative. And in a previous video, I showed you how to create a crackle background on fabric using a mixture of corn flour and water. And I would refer you to that video to see how I mixed up the corn flour and water so that you have an idea of what we're going to be doing. Today, however, I would like to show you how to use that same corn flour and water mixture, which you heated in the microwave so it's still warm, and that we're going to be having as a design instead of actually using it as a background. So having mixed my corn flour and water design, um, mixture, sorry, not design, I poured it into one of these little bottles that I could then fit a very fine tipped nozzle onto. And it's nice because it has a little cap. And onto my fabric, I have then drawn design. So this crinkled piece of fabric actually has some pattern. Um, and then you'll see I've done some little hearts and just some random designs and some daisies. Now it does make your fabric crinkle up a little bit, which if you are wanting to paint with a brush can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So once you've done your design and you've allowed it to dry completely, what I would suggest that you do is just get a piece of sponge. This is just a kitchen sponge and I tore the back off. Wet it and squeeze the moisture out so that it's damp. And then take your paint on a little surface and coat your surface with it. I do find that when you're working on these um, surfaces that have got uh, either flour and water resist or this corn flour resist, it's much easier to apply with a sponge. So you can see I've got a fairly even coating on there and I'm just going to start from the center and start rubbing the design on. And this sponge, because it's soft and flexible, allows me to push into all the corners and you should start to see the design popping up now. So I'm just going to continue till I feel that I've got sufficient paint. And you won't easily cover um, where the resist is, the corn flour mixture, because obviously that's going to resist the actual paint. I just need another squeeze of this. Let me just get some. Um, you would normally use fabric paints for this, but um, if you were doing a project such as a book cover, um, or something that wasn't going to be needing to get washed, then you could use some acrylic paint. So I've just got fabric paints here because mine will be made up into something that I can use and I might need to wash. So I'm just going to make sure that I get into all these little cracks, covering it all up nicely. I'm going to turn it round if need be, just to be able to get ease of access to the other side. And you can see now why I actually prefer to use a sponge rather than a brush because this would be extremely tedious. The other thing with a sponge is that it's really nice because you can actually smooth out the paint instead of getting huge big um, broad brush strokes which I do love for some designs but for this one I think it's going to be easier just to do this with a sponge. So I'm just making sure that anything that is not corn flour resist is getting painted, <laughs> getting into all the little nooks and crannies so to speak. And you're not using an awful lot of paint, which is amazing, because you actually are spreading it fairly evenly with the sponge. The sponge is lovely because it actually acts as a reservoir, so it holds some of the paint in it. And if you've ever done fabric painting, if you were doing a large area and you found, oh, towards the end you're running out of paint, then you could mix some clear cut or emulsion or extender, depending on what it's called in your country, um, into your paint so that if you've started painting from the center, which I've done, and then you work towards the edge, as you gradually add the extender, it will make your color slightly more translucent, but it does bulk it up so that you get to the end. I know it's one of the biggest challenges always to have a guess as to how much paint you actually need for a large surface. So you can see here that this is covered really easily. You can see the design has popped up nicely, but the fabric is still wrinkled. So what do we do about that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is set this aside and leave it to dry completely. And then once it's dry, remember that your, your mixture, that is your resist, is just simply cornstarch and water. So I'm going to just, first of all, heat set it on the back with a hot dry iron so that the paint is set into the fabric, because remember, I want to wash this. 
And then once I've done that, then I'm just going to soak this in normal tap water just to get the um, resist out. If you have a stubborn little bit, then take maybe something like a popsicle stick or maybe even just a little nail brush and just scrape it off. Or even maybe just a butter knife, something that's got a blunt edge. But when you've done that, it will be nice and flat and smooth and you'll be able to work with it really nice and easily. One thing you must be very careful of when you're doing this is don't work with very wet paint. So in other words, don't add a lot of water because the corn flour is diluted with water and if you've got water there, it's going to start lifting off before you've covered the background surface. Does that make sense? <laughs> anyway, this opens the scope for you to do all sorts of amazing designs. It could be for t-shirts, it could be book covers, and it's something that's really easy that even a child can actually do. So, let me set this aside, let it dry, and when it's completely dry, I will take some pictures and show you the result. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.